Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and today we're diving into a fascinating new paper that gives us a behind the scenes look at how competitive physique athletes actually train across the year. You've probably heard that volume is a key driver of muscle growth, but exactly how much volume each muscle group gets and how that changes between the off season and contest prep season hasn't been well documented. This 2025 study by Veraldo and colleagues took a systematic approach to quantify weekly training volume per muscle group in competitive athletes athletes across different divisions and training phases. Their results offer some surprising insight into how male and female competitors structure their programs and how cardio and resistance training shift as the competition date approaches. So let's start with some background. Training volume, often defined as the number of working sets per muscle group per week, is one of the most discussed variables in the area of resistance training programming. Some research has demonstrated that within reason, higher volumes can promote greater hypertrophy. But physique athletes face a rather unique challenge, balancing sufficient stimulus to maintain that muscle while also managing fatigue and recovery during a calorie deficit of a contest prep. On top of that, different competitive divisions place different emphasis on certain muscle groups. For example, divisions like classic bodybuilding may reward fuller pec and shoulder development, whereas bikini and wellness place more emphasis on the glutes and the shoulders. Now, despite all the theory and coaching advice out there, there has been little actual data describing what real competitive athletes are doing for each muscle group in each phase of their training season. In addition, the existing resistance training literature may have limited application to bodybuilders, since many studies often only include a two or three day training frequency, or a relatively small number of exercises and movements. For example, the well-known dose response volume study by Schoenfeld and colleagues limited themselves to just the knee extension, the barbell back squat and the leg press for the lower body stimulus across the eight week time period. And similar to this, Ennis and colleagues examined very high training volumes, up to 52 weekly sets, yet the entire volume was coming from just three core exercises, the barbell back squat, the 45 degree leg press and the seated knee extension. If you think about it, how many bodybuilders limit themselves to so few movements within the same training block? Also, resistance training studies often have quad work, but they don't really include a whole lot of hamstring or glute training. For example, how many scientific studies are you aware of that even include a glute kickback in the program? Or an abduction mover like you would see in most bodybuilding programs? So the present study being reviewed sought to fill in some of those gaps by collecting detailed self-reported training data from competitive physique athletes and quantifying their weekly volume per muscle group using a standardized calculation. With all this in mind, the primary aim of this study was to quantify and compare weekly strength training volume per muscle group during the off-season and pre-contest phase in competitive physique athletes. A secondary aim was to examine how these patterns differed between each of the divisions and of course track changes in cardio frequency and duration across the two phases. By doing so, the authors hoped to provide a more clear, division-specific snapshot of how competitive athletes adjust their training throughout the training year. So let's take a look at the methods. What did the authors do? This was a cross-sectional survey-based study involving competitive physique athletes from multiple different divisions and federations. Athletes were recruited from federations including the IFAB Elite Pro, NPC and the WNBF as well as the International Federation of Bodybuilding and lastly the National Amateur Bodybuilding Association. The athletes were invited to complete an online questionnaire that captured their training patterns in two distinct timeframes, their off-season and their pre-contest period. Now, there are not too many details on the survey listed in the paper, but the authors did provide a link to the survey. So I headed over to check it out, but it was in another language. However, despite this, I was able to make out the primary components of the survey. So the methods I will review today are a combination of from what the authors provided in the research manuscript, along with what I could derive from going over the survey. The survey broke down resistance training by muscle group, asking the athletes to report information on the number of different exercises performed for a given muscle. They also looked at the average number of sets performed per exercise and the number of training sessions per week in which that muscle was directly trained. From these responses, the researchers calculated a weekly training volume score for each muscle group by multiplying the exercise by the sets by the weekly frequency. 
This gave a standardised measure of the total weekly volume per muscle, which could be compared between individuals, phases and divisions. The analysis focused on 10 major muscle groups, the pecs, the delts, the lats, biceps, tries, quads and hamstrings, glutes, though no specification of glute max or glute medius, uh, the calves and the abdominals. The survey also asked athletes to choose the exercise that they most frequently performed from a list of each muscle group. These details helped confirm that the athletes reported volume matched common recognizable training movements and helped the authors to better understand common movements in bodybuilders training programs. The survey also recorded cardio training, asking the athletes for both their frequency and the duration in each training phase. This allowed the authors to compare how much cardio increased or decreased as athletes moved into prep. First, when looking at the overall training volume, athletes in all divisions reported performing significantly higher resistance training volume in the off-season compared to the pre-contest phase. This pattern was consistent across men and women, suggesting that as competitors get closer to competition, they tend to reduce their lifting volume rather than increase it. At the same time, cardio training increased sharply during contest prep. Both men and women reported adding more cardio sessions per week and the sessions were significantly longer in duration compared to the off-season. In other words, the typical prep strategy for these athletes seemed to involve a clear trade-off. Slightly less resistance training, but much more cardio work. When breaking down training by muscle group, some interesting differences appeared. For both men and women, quadriceps and hamstrings were among the highest volume muscle groups trained, especially in the off-season. In contrast, calves and abs tended to receive relatively low volume in both phases. Phases. Both sexes reduced training volume across nearly all muscle groups during the contest prep, though this reduction was most pronounced in larger muscle groups like the quads and the chest. Looking more closely at arm training, the biceps and triceps did show consistent training, but their volumes were notably lower compared to the larger muscle groups. Generally speaking, athletes appeared to prioritize major aesthetic muscle groups like the legs, the glutes and the back over muscles like the arms when the contest season approached. When it came to exercise selection, there were also clear preferences by sex. During the off season, the most frequently performed exercise among men were lat pull downs, the 45 degree leg press, squats, seated hamstring curls and seated calf raises, with 82% of males performing these movements. During the pre-contest phase, the most common exercises were the squats, seated hamstring curls, 45 degree leg press, seated calf raises and back extensions. And I have to say, I laughed a little at this breakdown, given how hard exercise science has roasted the seated calf raise. But moving on to women, the most frequent off-season exercises were the seated hamstring curl, squats, leg extensions, lat pull downs, and the hip abduction exercises. Then during the pre-contest prep phase, the most frequently performed exercises were squats, seated hamstring curls, leg extension, hip thrusts, and hip abduction machine exercises. Now, when comparing men and women during the off season, men were found to perform certain exercises far more frequently. Not surprisingly, this included exercises like the bench press with 62% of men completing this exercise, only 37% of women, the pec deck with 55% of men versus 17% for women, incline bench press, 54% men, only 3% for women, and the barbell row with 73% of men versus 40% of women. This likely reflects the differences not only in personal exercise preferences, but also the judging criteria for the different divisions in bodybuilding. Altogether, the results highlight a consistent strategy. Physique athletes tend to train with higher resistance training volumes in the off season, then they dial it back during the contest prep to help reduce the risk of injury, compensating with a large increase in cardio to ensure continued fat loss. And this applied broadly across all divisions and all muscle groups, though the relative emphasis placed on certain muscles and exercises reflected the typical physique goals for men and women. Interestingly, but not surprisingly, the lowest weekly volume seemed to be amongst the bikini athletes. These athletes reported around 7.5 sets for the shoulders during the off season. However, this actually increased to 15 sets in the pre-contest period. Biceps, triceps, and pec volume was also very 
very low for the bikini competitors, with around seven to nine weekly sets reported, regardless of the season. But as you guessed, the priorities are clear when you look at the glute volume. The bikini athletes reported 31 weekly sets in the off season and 15 weekly sets in the pre-contest period. And these numbers were pretty similar to the wellness girls, who reported 24 weekly sets during both the off and the pre-contest period. The higher glute volume in the males was reported in the classic physique category, who had 12 weekly sets during both off-season and pre-comp season. Now, the survey included in the present study did not discriminate between glute medius and the glute max training, which may have also been interesting to see. I know when I write programs, I treat these volumes separately with around 15 to 20 weekly sets dedicated to my glute max and around 15 to 20 sets dedicated to my upper glute or the glute medius, and that's across both phases. And with that said, if you are interested in more details regarding my programs, the link in the description of this video will actually bring you to my website where you can download a free copy of one of my glutes and shoulders programs. But let's get back to the study. So what does this mean for you? Well, the findings of the present study suggest that contest prep is characterized by selective reductions in resistance volume for certain muscle groups, most notably the upper body in some of the men's divisions, combined with a substantial increase in cardio. These adjustments likely reflect a balancing act between maintaining muscle, managing recovery, and increasing energy expenditure to help achieve the desired level of conditioning for stage. Off-season training, in contrast, places more emphasis on the muscle groups most rewarded in each division's judging criteria. For example, higher pec and delt volumes in classic bodybuilding makes sense given the desired aesthetic, whereas men's physique athletes may focus more on overall symmetry and may not push those muscle groups as aggressively. Overall, cardio is the most consistently increased variable in prep, while resistance volume changes were more division specific. Now, when interpreting these data, please keep in mind that the authors included a wide range of different organizations. For example, there were only nine bikini athletes and we don't know which organizations they represented or at least I couldn't work that out from their data. The bikini athletes in this study reported training volumes that are quite a bit different from how I structure my own workouts as an IFBB bikini pro so that data would have been interesting to have. In addition it's also important to point out that the reported volume by these athletes does not mean it's the ideal volume for optimal training adaptations either. However, it's extremely cool to have some data to better understand how athletes are allocating their time within their training programs. So to wrap this video up, in competitive physique athletes, weekly training volume per muscle group is tailored to the phase of the season and to the specific division's aesthetic demands. Off season it tends to prioritize building volume in key muscle groups, while pre contest volumes tend to shift towards maintaining size, selectively reducing resistance volume in some areas, and significantly increasing cardio, particularly its duration. These patterns certainly provide a practical benchmark for athletes and coaches, offering real world data to complement the existing hypertrophy research and programming theory. Well, everybody, thank you so much for watching. If you found this breakdown interesting, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on future deep dives into science and training around physique preparation. And I'd also love to hear from you all in the comments. If you've prepped for a competition, how did your training volume and cardio change from your off season to show day? Drop your comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.